Airflow is king if you want to have low thermals for your CPU and GPU and in most PC cases you have the intake fans mounted in the front end or side end button of the case. Cool air is pushed to cool the PC components and warm air will be exhausted through the back end or top of the case. And this is how case manufacturers showcase airflow during promo videos. But is this the best airflow for your air cooler? Stick around if you want to find out. Before we dive in, make sure to click the subscribe and like button to help the channel grow. For testing, I'm using a Lian Li Lancool 2 mesh case alongside the Phantom Spirit 120SE air cooler from Thermalite. I measure the distance from the front intake fans to the CP cooler and this is a bit more than 20 cm or around 8 inches. When we take a look at the distance between the fan in the back and the CPU cooler, it's around 7 cm or less than 3 inches. Now let me switch the airflow, with the intake fans being the back and top one that will be mounted above the CPU cooler. The fans under the GPU will act as intake for it, while the exhaust fans will be the front fans. In theory, this should perform better, as the fans that provide cool air to the CPU cooler are much closer. In order to test mix loads, I used the 7900 XTX with a power slit to 15% plus and checked the CPU thermals in Outcast 2. For consistency, I just sat on the same spot for 15 minutes and after, I recorded the thermals using Hardo Info 64. When it comes to stress testing the CPU, I use Furmark CPU burner. I'm gonna include as well temperatures for the Liquid Freezer 3 to 40 AIO with the Cooler Monster Mobius 120P RGB fans. When we look at the Furmark Thermals chart, we can see that the AIO has an advantage over the Phantom Spirit 120SC using the front to back airflow and the back to front airflow doesn't help at all. As it can be seen, there is a minor difference between the two flow, consider this a margin of error. A bit disappointing to be honest. Looking at the CPU clock speeds, the AIO delivers the highest clock average due to the lower thermals while the front-to-back airflow again bests the reverse airflow. So for pure CPU intensive tasks, front-to-back airflow is the best. Let's move to gaming now. Here we see that the AIO beats the CPU air cooler again, albeit the difference is small and when we look at the reverse airflow, we can see it falls behind when it comes to thermals compared to the normal airflow. One more thing I want to point out. In the reverse airflow, back to front, the GPU suffers a lot as you can see in this Hardware Info 64 log. It shoots up to 93 degrees Celsius while the front to back airflow has lower GPU hotspot values. And there you go, if you are considering to try this for yourself and see if you get better thermals, don't. Just save your time and do something meaningful as this approach doesn't add any benefits, it can actually be harmful for your GPU if you don't have good bottom intake fans. Another thing to mention is that by exhausting hot air through the front of the case, this can bother you especially in summer but can keep you warm during cold winters. If you liked the video and found it helpful, that is, in saving some time, hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, drop a comment below and let me know if you ever considered this airflow approach. Take care and hope to see you all in the next one.